<laughs> okay, so I can see everybody. And um, before I start, I would, say, would like to say thank you for joining me today. It was really nice of you to come and join me. And also some of your parents are with you as well. So hello. Um, but before we start, um, we're going, I'm going to ask people by their names to answer some of the questions that I'm going to ask. So no worries. I'll make sure as many people get a turn. Um, and you've not to worry in case you think your turn's not coming. OK, I just wanted to say that first of all. So, um, so look at, can you tell me what this screen says? Creative writing. Welcome to your first class. So welcome to your first class. Now, I would also like you to read out, can you read out what box one says, please? Yeah. What is creative writing? All right. Does anybody know what creative writing is? If you do, put your hands up. Do you have everyone? Do you have an idea? What about you, Blossom? Do you have any ideas what creative writing is about? Maybe I think it might be to do with like different types of genres of writing, like horror or diaries or something like that. Well, you know what? You've touched on that a little bit. That's correct. Um, but creative writing is about also using your imagination and it's about allowing yourself or your mind just to create. It's like your creative juices start to flow. There's no limits to this and your imagination. So it's about allowing yourself to write something and just be free with it. So, um, I, I, yeah, can you can you tell me what um, the second box says, please? I, yeah, I, is I, yeah. Different from other writings. All right. So, can you give me that answer? Why do you think it's so different? You can tell me, Ira. Uh, what I was thinking is that it's different from other writings because it uses your imagination. You have to think about, you have to think out, like, uh, out of the ordinary. You have to write something that is very creative. All right. So out of the ordinary, that's kind of like out of the box. So that was a really amazing point there. So thank you. Oceana. Can you read me the ben Can you read me box number three, please? Okay, then. Benefits of creative writing. All right. Um, what, what, what do you think some of the benefits of creative writing are? Uh, I think it's like... I think the benefits are that you can just be free and use your mind. That, listen, there are a lot of benefits, and that's a very good point. But creative writing, it's not just about our imagination, and it's not just about creativity. It's also about building up vocabulary. It's also about using our imagination and, and, and thinking, how can we write something different than what we wrote yesterday, for example? How can we make it so wonderful that we feel... It's really just really fantastic piece of writing. And but there's many benefits. What about you, David? What what benefit of creative writing do you think there could be? Um there could be like uh adventure story, for example, like a person first and then find them all of a sudden and then they ask them why they're there and then creative writing. Something right, so, okay, so David, you know what? That's a great idea. So when boys and girls, when you look at box number four, it talks about the different genres um, and different styles. And we'll touch on that later. But I would like to just add a little bit more of the benefits of creative writing um, and how they're not just about how they're different from traditional writing, but, but some of the key benefits. It really helps to build up your confidence. So, for example, when you're allowed to be <clears throat> truly your own self, when you're allowed to um, expose who you are as a young person, whether it's writing a horror script or a song or writing a journal or some notes in your diary, regardless of what your genre is, it's about how it makes you feel. Now, 
can we all just for one second, every boy and girl, close your eyes for just, I'm going to count to five. Close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Now, in those five seconds, we closed our eyes, but we just couldn't see anything. We closed our eyes. So that when we close our eyes and when we cover our ears and when we smell things, we're using what? What's, what is it we're using? Um, what is it we're using when we, what's it called, Blossom? Do you know? What is it called when we're bringing in all the different things? So we've got sight, we've got scent. What's that called? Five senses. Your senses, so creative writing, fantastic. Thank you, Shavrik. What, can you tell me the five senses? Yes, yeah, so hearing, sight, touch, smell, and um, the last one. Anyone so else know the last sight, one? Sight, touch, smell. Taste. I can't remember the fifth one. <laughs> Taste, Taste and hearing. So what's really powerful about creative writing that gets everybody really excited, boys and girls, is this. You can imagine anything. And sometimes when we are surrounded by the beautiful smells of nature, it inspires you. It inspires you to write about something that you might see or you might hear. So if you're talking about a superhero, you know, and he's, you know, bang, pow, poof, you know, those are descriptive words which are fabulous but you know there's power behind it or if we're walking along the river and we see some lovely flowers and we smell them we're going to remember that in our brain we're going to remember how it makes us feel so when we're writing creatively what makes that most different to traditional writings is sometimes when we're at school and we've got to write what we're learning at school we can do a fabulous job However, creative writing helps you to build up, for example, your vocabulary. Now, who have I not? So, Ram, if you were building up your vocabulary, will that help you at school or not help you? What's your answer? Help me. Help school. It's going to help you. And, wha and, and how is it going to help you? By thinking. It does. So, right. And when we build up our vocabulary, for example, and we use fabulous descriptive words to describe things, and we tap into that imagination, it kind of rolls on over to an everyday Mom? life. Hello, right. Mom? Yes? I actually have a question about creative writing. You Let said that creative... You said that creative writing helps in vocabulary, right? Helps to build up your vocabulary yeah. yes and uh, it can also be creative like uh, thinking or something else it does that's why what we can think is... faster we can think faster right so what happens is creative writing it's listen it's not a case of if you are traditional with your writing you don't think it doesn't mean and you're not good at it and it doesn't mean creative writing um takes you away from everyday writing. What it does is it blends together and it complements who you are, but it also draws out all of the hidden little gems of creativity that you have in your mind. It allows you to access parts of yourself, building up the confidence and making you more confident to write and be expressive. And that's kind of cool, don't you think? Don't you think that's kind of nice? That's kind of nice to know that there's yes, more. In, there's more inside can, of you. Mm, we can so, get to more thoughts as well and imaginative. Right? All right. So who is it? That's ta who's talking to me. Where are you? Ruthwick. Oh hi, yeah. Can you read me out what that says now on the screen, please? Uh, actually, in my camera is not working today. Oh, all right. No problem. Well, I'm going to ask, who have I not asked now? Let me see some wonderful person I've not asked yet. I'm coming down, you know, here we go. Cresswell, can you read out what that says there, please? Why do people write? Okay, let's put a wee bit more oomph. How about, why do people write? Let's just, ugh. why do people write? Why do you think people write? 
Why do you think Chris will? <laughs> to, to learn yeah. stuff. To learn stuff. That's why people write. Well, that's a great answer. Do you have any other answers? And to I teach people. Really. Well, you know what I'm going to do here? We're going to do, I'm going to just move you guys over here. All right. Um, Debbie, Sri, can you read me out the very first tick at the very top? There's three paragraphs. Can you read me the very first paragraph, please? You need to turn your mic on. It's S. De Debbie, it's your turn. Uh, to express an idea, emotion, thought, or fun is a, it's a medium of expression. Okay, so to express an idea, well, that's one answer, right? So when we have, when we're writing creatively, we can express ourselves. It's our ideas. So for all you people that really want to write something fun, you can express it. It's an emotion. It's a thought. It's about expressing how you feel and think. Sasha, or yes, Sasha, can you read me out the second tick, please? You need to take your mic. There we go. Well done. Creativity is defined. Divine. Well done. The uh, ability. Ability to create something new. Create something new. Through the use of your imagination, your mind and your experiences. Thank you so much for reading that to me. This new item can be tangible or intangible. Now, creativity is defined as the ability to, to create something new through the use of your imagination. Who can tell me what the word imagination is? Is that Kierwin? Can you tell me what imagination is, please? Kerwin, you need to turn your mic off. Oh, hi. Okay, so I'm going to just, Ram, can you tell me what imagination thinks, what imagination means? That you're like, like thinking of something. Yeah, okay, so that's sure. right. So imagination does mean that um it does mean that it means the ability to create something new through your imagination your mind it means to express how you feel and how you think all of these things but does anyone know what tangible versus intangible means can anyone just shout that out for me please <laughs> That's okay. We can have Rafik. Do you know that answer? Uh, can I repeat the question once? Yep. Hi. Um, can you tell me what you think the difference between something being tangible? Do you know what tangible means? No, no. Tangible means something that we can touch. So what do you think intangible would mean? Intangible means that we cannot touch like water or air. Right. So if we, for example, had a song and we came up with these fantastic lyrics, mm. we can't touch it, correct, boys, girls? We can't touch it, but we can definitely hear it. Yes. But let's just say we were to take our creativity and write that down on a piece of paper. What does that become then? Uh, uh, creative writing. Well, well, what that does is it means then when you're writing, for example, if you've written a song or you've written something and you become so caught up with the idea, you get so excited 
and you've written it all down. So these are thoughts that are going on in your brain and you can't see inside your brain, but you can actually write it down. So it becomes tangible. It becomes real what you've created. So that's kind of what I was getting at with that part as well. So creativity writing can therefore also be fiction. It can be nonfiction. So fiction means what? Shout out an answer to me, somebody. Uh, speed up. Right, and can someone tell me what fact means? Uh, uh, non-fiction. Real. Non-fiction means that it is real, and they discovered it, and they like it's real. Well done. So very much so, it's based on facts and events. So, but that doesn't mean when you go to write something and something is um, a fact, it doesn't mean you can't be creative with it. It means you can add vocabulary, you can expand your knowledge, so you can actually present it in a really creative manner, but it's still factual. So it's really important to understand the differences between all of these things. Now, um, it says over here that, John, let's consider these examples, right? Um, so, Tafari, can you possibly read that out to me, all of that page, but taking time with the blue, yellow and red squares? Are you there, Tafari? No? I am. Um, I am. Uh, Mom? Hi. Mom? Can oh. Oh. That's okay. Uh, um, Tafari, is that you? Uh, yes. Can you possibly read me out then this page and just take your time within each box? I, so I would love for you to read the blue box and... I would like you to read it all out and I'm going to go over it, okay? So you can read out the blue box, that would be fabulous. No? Okay, let's try somebody else then. Javid, can you can you read that for me, please? John is a good boy with nice ideas. John is a remarkable boy with Wonderful ideas. Rachel will run really fast. Rachel will run like the wind. R she is a very quiet girl. She is as quiet as a mouse. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. So let's go back up, boys and girls, right back up to the blue box. John is a good boy with nice ideas. That's a pretty nice sentence, isn't it? It's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. But when we change that, when we say John is a remarkable boy with wonderful ideas, what did we do with that? Let me ask someone else now. Ian and Elisa, can you give me the answer to that, please? Ian and Elisa, can you tell me the differences between the two sentences? Uh, John is a good boy with, a, with nice ideas isn't as powerful as uh, or good as John is a remarkable boy it brings some emphasis into it Right. Well, it's it's not just so. Basically, this is the this is the the one the, a fabulous example about creative writing. What we've done is we've just taken a, a good boy and we've just put in a remarkable boy because we've what we've done is we've expanded the vocabulary. We've used something really a little bit more powerful to describe John being that boy. So. He is a good boy, but he's a remarkable boy with wonderful ideas. Now, it's the same as Rachel ran very fast. A good enough sentence. But Rachel ran like the wind. Who can tell me what that change? Who can tell me about that? Well, yes, on you go. It me, when you said that Rachel ran very fast, and Rachel ran like the wind, they both mean the same, but but it just shows that she ran really, really fast. Just like how John is a good, like much more powerful. 
That's right. And you know something, when can we, boys and girls, can we see the wind? I mean, let's be real. If we looked outside our windows right now, I actually looked out my window. I'm showing you my window, my look. If we look outside our window and we can hear the wind, for example, only if there's something caught up in the wind can we see it, right? But it's not often as obvious. It's more things that blow in the wind, okay? So Rachel ran very fast, but Rachel ran like the wind. It automatically creates this illusion in our mind, this picture of, of Rachel running like the wind. So we all know the wind is incredibly fast and it can it, it's powerful. There's movement to it. So that's what that sentence did. It, it creates movement in our mind. So again, bringing in the senses um, with that one. Now, she is very quiet. She's as quiet as a mouse. So... When we are talking about that particular sentence, who can tell me? Varna, Varna, can you tell me she's as quiet or oh, she's a quiet child? She's as quiet as a mouse. What happens? What does that create in our mind when we say that sentence? Like no one can hear her. That's right. But. When we say she's as quiet as a mouse, why do you, what what do you think that's done to the sentence? She is more quiet. Yes, she's been because our our mouse our mouse are they loud? No. No, right. So she's been compared. So again, we can write a really lovely sentence. She's a very quiet child. But when we say she's as quiet as a mouse, we're comparing her to the mouse. And it just makes, would you think, would you I mean, agree that it makes the sentence a little bit more interesting? Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Would everybody agree? Thumbs up if you think, yes, yes it, it, it well, just completely changes what we're writing. Mm -hmm. And it just... It's a little bit more creative, a little bit more fun, a little bit more imaginative. Now, does everyone understand and see those changes? And Sharvik, can you actually can you actually see the changes and the differences between the sentences? And what's your opinion on that? Uh, that <clears throat> when it says she's a boy as a mouth, she's saying that she does. She's like. Adding more description on why she's this quiet. That's right. Very well done. So when you go to write, boys and girls, this is this is what creative <laughs> writing is all about. It's I about want to, oh yes. I want to say something about the red box. It says she's What's a very quiet Ritwik. Ritvik? All right. So tell very, me about the red box, Ritvik. She's a very quiet child. She's quiet as a mouse. It, it says a quiet child and he compared it to her mouse. In our mind, it says the mouse is so quiet that it squeaks. Oh, it squeaks. So you get from that sentence another word. You get the word squeak. Yeah, so that because means you're... mouse squeaks very quietly that we can't even hear. But you know something? You've just you've just absolutely done what this is about. Nobody mentioned squeak, but you did. But we don't see the word squeak now, do we? What you've done is you've allowed then... your mind to visualize the mouse. And then yeah. you've thought, oh, what does a mouse do? Oh, a mouse squeaks. Right? Squeak, squeak. Yes. So you've just added on. So even though it's, she's a quiet child, and even though this is talking about it being quiet, you've added in something different, which is really nice. So boys and girls, no. let's go on to the this mouse, one now. Ma'am, see, the mouse, the mouse talks like, uh, we don't know the mouse's language because it only squeaks. In, in human's <laughs> language, she talks very quietly that we can't even hear her. Well, that's wonderful. I'm going to read this out to you now, boys and girls. The style of writing is one clear difference between academic, technical, and creative articles. 
while, creati while creativity is not bound by any specific style or pattern, in other forms of writings, you need to stick to the standards. They are more informative, to the point, and structured. And that's one thing you'll learn. Um, you know, the style of writing, this is the biggest difference, I suppose, is about the styles of writings. Academic, technical, and creative articles, they are different. But creative, creativity, it's not um, ruled by any specific style or pattern. It's not <laughs> governed by the rules. So in other words, let me just see now. In other words, Kirwin, can you tell me what you think about that? About it doesn't need to stick to the, the standards. What do you think that paragraph there means? I don't really know, but... Give it a try, because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it, uh, well, I'll tell you what. If you go down to this one here, they are more informative to the point and structured, okay? So... So what do you think? So basically different forms of writing. And when we go, say, I'm going to use the word traditional, okay? Sometimes when we write traditional things, it's a little bit more, we've got to make sure every T, every capital, every punctuation is perfect. We can't make the mistakes just as much, okay? There's a few more rules expected. Trade of writing, it's not that you can break those rules all the time, but just sometimes you can write a silly poem. It doesn't have to rhyme. It does not have to make sense. And it's your own imagination. It's what you believe you're relating to what you write. So what's important is, boys and girls, is basically when you're writing something, don't be afraid to express who you are within that because that's part of who you are. And that's why creative writing creates that outlet for you to express yourself that's different from academic or te technical writing it just is less structured so it allows you to fill it up with more detail now it, i'm just going to bring this all the way over here the, okay let me see now i'm going to ask somebody ask to question. read this for me can I ask a question <coughs> absolutely I'd lo i love the questions who's this talking the javi hi yeah uh when when it said why do people write uh, it could be that they're writing for it because they're writing about their feelings and why they're, they're making up this story, for example. That's right. We're going to touch up. That's right. When we're writing stories, um, your feelings are really, really, really important in creative writing. And feelings, that's what you express how you feel. And often when we feel something, it doesn't have, this is really important too, it doesn't always have to be some positive, wonderful feeling. You are allowed to express yourself and write down your feelings if you've had a bad day or if you're feeling sad I, I, or you're you're kind of not too sure. It's, it's just about expressing how you feel inside and choosing a style like for example if there's a boy or a girl out there that loves to to play the piano or or to play the guitar coming up with a song writing a song expressing how you feel lots of songs can be sad and happy they can be about anything it's up to the individual person to express so everything you write is about you. It's about you've got you're a part of that. It's almost like abstract art. It doesn't always need to make sense, but you can relate to it. You can understand because you have written it. It belongs no, to you. Right? I might want to tell All right, can we just point it out? Um, Ram, can you read me out um please this box here? The box over here to the right, the overall intent. The over, oh, the overall intent of creative writing is not to inform. It is to stir the emotions to electric and emotion response. It is original, imaginative, and mostly 
recreational. Recreational. Thank you so much. You read that so well. Um, so, yes, um, very much at, at, uh, creative writing. It is just imagine a big pot in the house and you're helping mum or dad or grandma, you're cooking something and you're just throwing in all of these ingredients and you're stirring it all up. That's kind of what the purpose of emotional creative writing is about, is to stir up those emotions and to allow yourself to pull out from your own self emotional response to whatever that might be, okay? So we can have emotional responses at five o'clock in the early evening, and we might not realize that. We'll wake up the next morning and we get up and we're feeling not too bad, and all of a sudden you've got this re this idea about something. You don't realize that maybe the day before you've reacted to something, You've had an emotional response, but your body's just taken a little bit of time to process it. And before you know it, you've come up with a fabulous idea and it's imaginative to do something with how you responded to something. And it could very well be you, you might have a project for school and you have to come up with something or something you have to do, but you weren't too sure. And you might have been out riding your bike and you saw something up in the air and you know what? It created something inside of you. And the next day, all of a sudden, you've got your idea for something. So that's what that's all about. So we're going to just go down to here now. And I'm going to move all of this stuff over here so we can see all this. Sorry about this. Okay, let's take this one away. And we're going to over here now. So why should we learn creative writing? No. Mom, I, yes? I have a question. Why should we learn creative writing? Uh, best so, way to spend free excuse time. Me. Sorry, hi, who's talking? Rudvik. Rudvik, I would like for you to just, can you read me out one box, please? And I'm going to allow somebody else to have a turn too, okay? So if you could read me out the title again and read me out the first box only, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Why should we learn creative writing? Effective communication. All right, Rathvik, tell me, what does effective communication mean? Effective communication means that it's, uh, how should I tell you the meaning of affection? Oh, take your time. Yeah, no problem. There's no rush. So tell us. Effective communication. What do you think, Rutvik? Because I know you've got a big brain and I know. So tell me. What do you think communication means? Communication means we talk to one person to another. And effective just is another word for correct communication. So, so basically, why should we learn creative writing? Effective communication. Now, I'm going to bring us back to that song. That one of you boys and girls are going to write one day. Ma'am, I have a question. Okay. Increases like liking for reading. In today's now, we only spend time in like uh, laptops or TVs, etc. If if we if we write creative, we we read too much of books the whole time. All right. Well, that's true. So. It's really good to be able to find balance. And it's really important to understand what we should do and what we shouldn't do, not too much of. Um, and it's also about learning to take turns and wait for someone to ask you to speak. Effective communication is also about listening and it's also about expressing yourself but effective communication can be if you're somebody that's a songwriter you, how you I got it I got it what does effective communication means if you're talking to someone we talk with emotions of communication emotions also comes under effective right you know what that was a fabulous answer I really loved your answer, but Ruthvik, I'm going to let someone else have a turn talking now. I really appreciate your ideas because you know something, you've given me some things to think about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask um, Ram, can you read me out the second one, please? 
boost his ability to express oneself. Right. So what does that mean to you, Ram? It's mean to express yourself by talking. Right. Yeah. And, and, and also, Ram, can you actually complete, like, can you finish all this for me? So this ability to express oneself, can you read the rest of this for me, please? Improves critical thinking. Critical, critical thinking. And that's okay. Keep reading. Increase liking for reading. Best way to spend free time. Thank you for reading that. That was wonderful. What do you think improves crit critical thinking or best way to spend free time or even increases liking for reading? Do you have any comments about that? What about you, Nancy? Do you have any comments about that? Or any thoughts to share? Sudaf, are you able to share with me? Okay, boys and girls, are we able to hear Paula? Can someone start talking? <laughs> yes. Who, who's talking? What's your name? Uh, can, can you tell me your name? Hi, was can someone tell me? Can someone someone was about to give me a really good um ans a good answer there? Just can someone tell me what your name was there that you were speaking? Who was speaking? Suman. Oh, I seem to have lost all oh, right all the children. I think we've all gone very quiet. Hello, ma'am. Hi. It's me, Ludwig. All right. Well, I, listen. If it's if if I can hear you, that's great. So I I actually have a question about improves. What is critical? I don't know that word. Well, that means important. Oh. Let's just can critical. So it's important. So if something improves critical thinking, and let's say we're talking about you, Ruthvik, right now. What do you think that would that would mean for you to improve? Just say, let's just say an important thinking within yourself or you have to come up with some thinking what do you think it does i think when we are studying we use critical thinking right yes it does and what that does is it just allows you to think about your own self what your own thoughts are without needing to be told what the, mm. what those thoughts are so it's almost someone that's a really good critical thinker or as someone that's on a debate team they can come up with some really fabulous ideas of their own as to why they think th those ideas are really great and then if you come over here increases liking for reading you touched on that which was great and also you touched on it's a really good way to spend free time all right so what we're going to do now boys and girls is we're going i'm going to move this over here we're going to talk about creative genres. Genre is a word often used to describe categories or types of written text. Some of the more familiar genres of creative writing are below. Now, does anybody know one genre? Shout it out to me, please. Or fiction. Right. Fiction. What else is there? Fiction. What else? Fantasy. What else? One, I know one genre. Fantasy. Mystery. Okay, so, so like, I know one genre. Oh, like science, biology. Science fiction. Science fiction. Well, that that okay. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you something that's just specifically a little bit more within the creative writing aspect. Okay, so you can write a science story or a scientific story. You can write an essay or a song. So a song, lyrics, science fiction. You could write a movie using the format of a script or a story. So basically, boys and girls, all of these wonderful things that you're talking about, 
is is definitely part of what creative writing is all about. But I think what we're going to do now for a little bit of fun, 